swim to me, Mira. Swim to me. <laughs> Amber Heard, the girl who cried wolf. First up, I'm just going to look at the, the new news to see if there's any news. There's always wonderful news about Amber Heard. By the way, I got this picture and the previous one from uh, an Instagram account called Amber Heard Sister. And they added me and they got lots of hilarious pictures. Mm, oh, I guess the, the latest piece of news is that Amber Heard says she only hit Johnny Depp once and it was for a good reason. Yeah, there's always a good reason, isn't there? It's just more of the same, you know. You know, I, I didn't mean to uh, run over those kids in my car. It was just that I was drunk. Mm, but I read the article and she says that uh, she was protecting her sister because Johnny Depp was going to attack her sister. So now she's bringing her sister into this. So is her sister going to testify that Johnny Depp was going to hit her? I, how much? I bet she won't. I wouldn't be surprised if her, if her sister goes, uh, she's a liar. But hey, no worries. Like, you can discuss all this. It's not like it's public. Just, you know, you can bring your family into it. You ridiculous Texas hillbilly. So Amber Heard is indeed the girl who cried wolf. Uh, it's funny because the wolf is Johnny Depp. And he's really far from a wolf as far as I can tell. He's a bunny rabbit. To a fault. Like, he's not a very uh, aggressive person. He's not a type A personality. He's not the kind of person who, you know, I, I don't think anybody's ever seen or heard of him ever being angry. And though you can't judge a book in entirety by its cover, you can make some judgments. There's an expression, if it quacks like a duck, if it acts like a duck. Okay, well, in Johnny Depp's case, if it acts like a bunny rabbit and it hops around like a bunny rabbit, it might, maybe it's a bunny rabbit. Uh, he doesn't act... <laughs> You know, it's dangerous to say that aggressive bullies act, abusers act a certain way. But they do, though. It's more like the wolf who cried wolf, because she's a wolf. By all, If we judge her by her cover, uh, she's displayed all, every single um, behavior pattern of an abuser. However, she's worse than the girl who cried wolf, or the boy who cried wolf, because the boy who cried wolf... He just blew it for himself because nobody would believe him anymore. But Amber Heard blew it for every woman who's being abused because now they can't say it because they're going to be doubted because people will say, well, boy, maybe she's another Amber Heard. So she's worse than the boy who cried wolf. She's the, she's the girl who cried wolf and then ruined the whole town because now when there's a wolf and anybody in the town says there's a wolf, nobody will believe them. Now, um... An insight into the male perspective, because I don't think men are pure evil. I hope not, because that would mean I am. Um, now look, I, I was walking with a very gorgeous girl one time at three in the morning, and I was like, let's go through the alley, it's faster. And she's like, oh my god, I can't believe like men can walk through alleys at like three in the morning, that's crazy. And I never thought of that. I never thought that, that a woman can't necessarily feel comfortable walking at three in the morning anywhere she wants. It's not that I don't care about them. It's not that I don't care to think in their shoes. It's that I've just never experienced that feeling. And on that note, I've never known a guy who was a rapist. No, I'm not saying that no men are rapists. I just personally have not heard about it, known a person. However, I have known a number of girls who have well, no, I knew one girl who accused somebody of beating her up, and it was a lie. One girl. And I know it was a lie because she admitted it to me right away, that she made the whole thing up. She had the cops there and everything. It was the most humiliating experience for him. I was there during at the moment. It was, the, it was despicable. It was so degrading. He was dumping her, and she didn't like that. And we drove back to his dad's house afterwards and we sang on the radio, came on the garbage song, Stupid Girl, and we, we sang along to it. And this guy, by the way, is one of the most gentle people I've ever met. Wouldn't hurt a fly, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, it's not just that men are evil and they don't care. It's that, I mean, they're thinking of it from their perspective and they're thinking, well, shit, I mean, if a girl said that I raped her, I guess I'd go to jail. And like... I don't know. I mean, if I ever I make a, if I ever I make a girl feel uncomfortable, am I a rapist then? Uh, there was one girl I met <clears throat> who was born and bred to be a feminist, 
and not just any feminist, the type of feminist, because there's lots of different types of feminists, the type of feminist that hates men, that thinks that women are better than men. And when I told people, especially women in particular, that she was a feminist, they would roll their eyes. And finally I said, now I know why people roll their eyes when I say she's a feminist. And she goes, you know what, I've been a feminist my whole life, so you know I don't think you have any business telling me talking about feminism. You don't know anything about feminism. And I said, I know more about, I know more than enough about feminism, thanks to you, to know that I don't like it. Now, the interesting paradox with her was that she was born and raised to hate men and think that they're inferior, hate her father, and think that men are just scum. But she was heterosexual and like highly attracted to men. So what happens when you think men are all scum, but you love them? Well, then you're going to, you're going to be attracted to the kind of man who is scum, right? If, if, you're, if you think that males are all rapists and violent jerks, but you're attracted to males, then that means you're going to be attracted to males who are violent jerks. So I dated one girl once who uh, did something terrible, terribly mean to me. And when I told her that was terribly mean, she goes, oh, you don't know what pain is. You don't know what mean is. I was raped. And so I said to another female friend of mine, I said, uh, I told her what, what this other one had said. And I says, uh, uh, I don't think it makes it okay to hurt other people because you've had more pain than they've had. Like, because she's had real pain, she's allowed to cause me pain. And uh, the, my female friend was like, well, I have been raped. I've also been raped. And I can tell you that you, you shouldn't do that. If anything, it's even worse to cause an innocent person pain who's never experienced that kind of pain. If anything, you have more of a responsibility to shield and protect that innocent person from such kinds of pain. And then, a few years later, another one, another girl, and they, uh, who was also, it seems to be the gorgeous ones because they just get away with everything. Um, she said, oh, well, you know, I may have done all this terrible stuff to you, but I was raped. <laughs> And then I spoke to another female friend of mine and she goes, I was raped too. And I can say that's bullshit. Like she, she can't, she can't use rape as an excuse to be a jerk to everybody. And getting back to the news thing where Amber said that she, uh, she only punched him once. Well, it only needs to be once, right? You only need to punch somebody once to let them know that if they ever followed a line again, you'll punch them again. Uh, an abuser only needs to punch you once. To, to lay down that law. And then you're afraid all year that they might do it again, right? Most abusers, they don't, they don't punch their, their girlfriend or their husband, boyfriend every day. They just do it once in a year. But then that, the, the, the partner knows that that's, it's possible. And that was the, that's the whole point of it. To summarize those two anecdotes, uh, the, the two girls who had both told me, well, I, I have been abused as well and I would never attack somebody those girls they're they're strong women in my in my definition they they don't bring up rape every moment like blame every, their whole lives on the fact that something happened to them once they don't even like mentioning it they're and they think that like all this bullshit in hollywood is is bullshit and one of them said to me hey for 15 million dollars i'll i'll have sex with a uh, sleazy movie producer and I know that's not the entire point. The, the point is that it shouldn't be that kind of climate, and that's understandable. But, I mean, to go on about it forever and to, to assume that you had no p place in this, like, there is a uh, no responsibility in this. Uh, there's a hilarious YouTube video where they got, like, Gwyneth Paltrow and all these people doing their Oscar award speech where they all say, and I want to thank Harvey Weinstein because he's such a great man, and he's so amazing, and I love you, and we all love you, Harvey. It's like, well, who told you to do that? Like, at what point do you say, no, I'm not doing that? You know, like, they should be saying, my integrity is more important than my movie career, and I am not going to allow myself, I'm not going to go up on stage like a puppet and praise this man. <laughs> at what point do you have responsibility? And, like, you can either be a, a powerful human being or a weak little coward innocent the victim you can't be both the victim and the hero at the same time you got to pick one you know the real heroes 
here are Ashley Judd, uh, Rose McGowan, uh, people who said no and did sacrifice their careers. The people who said no when it wasn't popular to say no, right? When there was something to lose. Right? Now that it's so popular, <laughs> it's not very hard. Right? The old expression is, uh, bad things happen when good people do nothing. Well, Meryl Streep, all these people were good people who did nothing when the bad things were happening. And then they want to turn around and say that they were the victims. And this is slightly off topic, but uh, Amber Heard married Johnny Depp. He left his wife for her. So they, she obviously picked him up knowing he was married. The other thing is, when you brag about how charitable and good you are, you uh, nullify the good deed. For example, if I donate money to charity and then I just go around telling everybody that I donated money to charity, it kind of nullifies the good deed. And um, McDonald's seems to get, like if it's a corporation, it gets away with it. Like McDonald's will say, oh, we give all this money to children's charities. It's like, well, why are you bragging about it? Do it silently then if you if you actually care about children's charities. And yeah, like and if you... Amber Heard, if you were really the victim of physical abuse, you should be. Do Why don't you silently donate all your money to charity to for women's battered women's shelters and stuff? How much do you think? I, I mean, I've seen her on Instagram. She's taking tours all over the world. She's enjoying her money, right? And I'm not saying there's, you know, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying you can't say you're Mother Teresa when you're, you know touring on yachts and going all over the world and living in mansions and the finer things in life. and But you're also going to say what a good person you are and a humanitarian and a spokesperson for the Me Too movement. Now, Woody Allen recently had a, a boycott. A uh, bunch of people did a walkout on him. A bunch of people walked out on Roman Polanski. I think they're both scumbag pedophile freaks. But I do think, though, that a person's art should speak for itself in a sense that like, okay, so if I found out Mozart or Bach had been rapists or pedophiles, would that then make his music shit? No, it wouldn't. And the ultimate analogy I've always used is if you needed brain surgery, like really, really uh, delicate brain surgery in, to save your life, would you rather the brain surgery be done by the best brain surgery best best brain surgeon in the world who happens to be a pedophile a convicted pedophile or a um, average uh ability brain surgeon who is just a really nice guy now the difference in the case of people like amber heard or woody allen or harvey weinstein is that they are in the public eye and they kind of do make a living based on their reputation However, somebody like a, a brain surgeon or a, a, a great artist, I'm not talking about shit artists like actors or singers, but like, you know, Picasso, something like that. He really doesn't need a reputation as a nice guy because his art is that good. So, you know, he can get away with whatever, get away with anything. He can get away with murder almost literally. So that's it. Um, I, I guess I should emphasize that uh, you should comment and like and subscribe. Although I'm hesitant because I'm not sure I want a million subscribers. I do kind of enjoy my an anonymity. Or else maybe some girl on YouTube might accuse me of rape one day. If you like gays, click like. If you like blacks, comment. If you like women, click notification bell. If you like gay women, subscribe. And if you like gay black women, uh, Patreon, Human Warnings, give me money. When I was 17, I was in Vancouver, <clears throat> and I was panhandling. It was Christmas, and this big old Russian guy in a trench coat comes up, and he goes, he says to me, he goes, I want to see you naked. And I go, uh, no. And he goes, how much money you want? And I go, well, it doesn't matter. Like, it's not happening. And he goes, how much money you want? And I go, look. I go, I already said no like 10 times. And then finally I go, look, you could offer me a million, a million dollars and I would still say no. And then finally he gave up. Because 
my I don't want to go I don't want to go to my deathbed knowing that I like did that. <laughs> I don't want that image in my mind for even for a hundred million dollars. And well, what I'm talking about is like integrity. And you know, a friend of mine who I respect a lot recently gave me a great compliment. She said, "She, eh? oh, I guess I don't hate women." She said, "You know what? You've never compromised." Ever. You've always maintained your artistic integrity. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's true. Thanks. And uh, But, like, how many people would uh, give a blowjob for a uh, million dollars? Most people, in fact. So, and then, you know, like, one of the few benefits of being somebody with integrity is that I do get to judge everybody. and uh, And one of the few... One of the many detriments of being a sellout, like a Hollywood actor, is that you don't get to judge anybody because chances are you probably did do the blowjob for a billion million dollars. And then you don't get to turn around and say, well, it's the industry's fault. It's not my fault. <laughs>